Hey y'all and welcome to Politibrawl. My name is Brian and Jordan Peterson calls out this woke activist who wants to police the way you think and speak and he's right to do so. Let's go. You know, mostly with this Peterson controversy, which is really just a small drama, a tempest in a teapot, you know, he could just get over learning to program a few pronouns into his phone. By the way, I only have half a dozen or so that I actually use on an everyday basis. So it's not all that difficult. Professor think, Peterson, sorry, you know, Professor Peterson, good job because I think Professor Peterson wants to, to get in on that. Yeah, well, kindness is the excuse that social justice warriors use when they want to exercise control over what other people think and say. So, you know, if we're bandying back and forth uh, our, our differences in values, you know, um, I, I would say that the highest possible value is truth and that uh, one of the concomitants is that is that is that we need stringent protection for freedom of speech so that we can utter the truths that we see fit. And I think that that's a, a value that's much higher than than kindness, for example. I mean, there's lots of situations in life where where kindness in the immediate present is not a, the appropriate way to, to react at all. But so, for example, well, when um, you discipline children, you often hurt their feelings in the short term so that they can learn to behave properly um, in the medium to long term so that their lives go well. And so this automatic assumption that the people on the social justice warrior side of the equation are motivated only by kindness when they're also clearly motivated by power is something I find completely untenable. And I don't think that Pete's solution to program my cell phone so that I can remember what names people need to be called is a reasonable solution at all. We're, we're actually supposed to now use electronic devices to bolster our ability to speak freely How do in you case remember we names, offend Jordan? someone. Is it so difficult to remember a pronoun? You remember somebody's first name, you remember their telephone number. I mean, I, I think that uh, it's very I don't very, remember very people's first names very easily, and I don't remember their telephone numbers very easily. And when I see a stranger, I call them by the pronoun that seems to be in accordance with their presented appearance. And That's you they being appear lazy, that way. Jordan. That's you being lazy. My refusal to, prono to use pronouns because left-wing activists want me to use them has nothing to do with whether or not trans people are having difficulties in society. And I'd also like to point out that I've had many well, letters of support. Problem, isn't it? I've had many letters of support from trans people. And, and they tell me that the trans, uh, the trans activists don't support them, and most trans people Jordan, actually wanted to be referred to as he or she. Doesn't mean they that weren't you my are friends. Untransphobic. They just weren't my friends. Just because you know a few people, just because you've talked they, to a few trans them. people, you you don't know the trans community like the trans community does. You've got no idea no, what professor, it's like. The trans, to be trans. Professor P, let's, the trans, let's, let's, Professor Peterson, I'm sorry to interrupt. Let's yeah. let's uh, let Professor Peterson finish his thought, please. All right. So, the the trans activists aren't. Um, aren't proper representatives of the trans community because they haven't been elected by the trans community. They're, Nobody elected they're noisy. you either, Jordan. I'm not speaking for anyone except myself and on behalf of other people perhaps who want to use, who want to maintain the right to free speech. I'm not claiming that I'm a representative of white people or white men or any other group. I'm speaking on behalf of myself. Unfathomably based. Ugh, oh, I love Jordan Peterson. Oh, it's a shame they tried to cancel him and it's a shame what Canada keeps on doing to him. They want to run him through the ringer. They've tried to take his license away. As a matter of fact, I think they've succeeded in taking his license away because he actually has a good point. And it's a good criticism of the trans community. And I don't want to get too, too mired up in things, but ultimately his point is simple. Activists will use the mask of kindness in order to run you over roughshod. The, ru the nice thing is to respect the pronouns, right? No, this is like parenting. You might need to discipline your child. And I'm sure I'll, I'll have to do mine at some point. You have to discipline your child. What's the best way to do it? Well, the kindness part says forgive them. No, 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 no. We often mistake uh, the idea of kindness and forgiveness and sort of mesh them together. It's why there's no real way to redeem yourself on the left. Hey y'all, this is a shout out to my friends over at Colonial Metals Group, where CEO Paul Stone and his expert associates fully understand the gravity of our current situation and want to protect your wealth backed by gold, silver, and other precious metals. Folks, we are in an era of record inflation. We have a Congress that won't stop spending and a president who doesn't even know what planet he's on. That's how bad the situation is, and that's why I'm partnering with Colonial Metals Group. And if you have a first-time account with these fine, upstanding people, you will receive up to $7,500 worth of silver, a nice old safe to keep all the good stuff in, 
you will get Roth IRA accounts for free backed by gold and silver and insurance and warranty on these items for five years, all for free. So call the number below check or check out the link in the description and let CEO Paul Stone and his expert team help you now because your wealth might evaporate before your very eyes. Protect your wealth, protect your family, protect your future with Colonial Metals Group today. Now, back to regularly scheduled programming. There is no path to redemption if you're a leftist. The moment you break rank and do something that's against the consensus, you are a pariah and you will never be allowed back in. It does not matter if you apologize. It does not matter if you were right. It does not matter if you had merit. It does not matter if you were standing up for someone or something that you believed in. There is no redemption on the left, or at least in the general consensus of the left. There are ways to get back in it. Again, it's true that there are ways to be leftist and be unfathomably based. I have met and worked with people like this, but the majority of them can't grasp it. They are often fighting, grasping at straws, trying to get into power. And one of the best ways to get in power, or at least to move the Overton window, is through rhetoric. And that rhetoric will be used often through the veneer of kindness in order to shame you into doing exactly what they want you to do. The ultimate goal of many leftists, and I'm talking actual communists here, not, not leftists, there's a difference between leftists and communists. The ultimate goal of the communists is to put the boot down on your neck and make you swear fealty to the worker in rhetoric, word, and deed. Okay? They will try to quite literally rewire your mind. And by the way, it's very telling that we now have a leftist politicians and hardline Democrats talking about constant uh, re-education camps. Funny what they're saying when they're saying the quiet part out loud. You can't separate the communists and the gulags. All right? You just can't do it. And so the activist will try to get you to respect certain words in ways that are flagrantly untrue, anti-scientific, and borderline, as a matter of fact, I think it, I can come out right and say a lot of it is psychotic. Body dysmorphia is a real problem, and it deserves treatment, not unquestioned respect. You have to earn respect in my eyes, and I hope that's the same way y'all take it as well. You have to earn the respect of other people. You don't automatically get extra pronouns. For instance, if you are a doctor, or if you, are, if you have gone through graduate school, you deserve the term doctor because you have had the merit, you have gone through the processes, you have gone through the rigors of an education system, and you have earned that extra title. When it comes to the pronoun game, you kind of have to earn it. In order for me to call you what you think you deserve, you need to earn that respect at a basic level. I do not automatically give you this respect. This isn't about kindness. This is about power. And they will use any method necessary in order to have power over you. Whether that be through shame, whether that be through guilt, whether that be through ridicule, whether that be calling you names, it does not matter. It should not matter, and you should not let it get to you. Because that person deserves respect, but respect also must be earned. That's the issue here. Left wants respect and power without earning it. And these activists want the exact same thing. And it's all because they think it is a kind thing to do. It is not. These are people who need help. People who have these pronouns in their bios need a different sort of help. They either need to be under the protection of their families and not really be out on social media, or they need more drastic correction. They need help. The kindness that we need to show them is correction, not blanket positivity and blanket kindness. Forgiveness is something that is earned, and that's something that the left does not inherently understand because they do not understand the idea of forgiveness. They think kindness is equivalent to it and thus build a lot of their political ideology around this blatantly incorrect thought. And they pass it off as the truth. Truth be known, 
they know very little of the truth. That's just the sad reality. That's what Jordan Peterson is fighting against, and that's why leftists hate him so much. Folks, my name is Brian. Hope you enjoyed this segment here on Politibrawl. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Catch you on the next one, and until then, y'all have a good one.